If twin stick shooters are your thing, is Hotline Miami the bloodied and battered pastel game of your dreams, or a clunky attempt at trying to make murder cool again? Watch on and find out. My name is Thorax, and this is Strategy for Busy People. If you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you what to play. We take special requests here at Strategy for Busy People, and viewer Hella Energy gifted us with this copy of Hotline Miami by Denaton Games. I put just over an hour into this game. Hotline Miami is, more or less, a twin-stick shooter. It's a cocaine-filled, pastel-infused shoot-'em-up set in the 80s, just like you'd expect. The music is really good. The pixel art graphics really got my outrun vibes... uh... vibing? But, like most things, Florida, it sucks. I understand what the game is going for, I think. It's trying to be a fast-paced twin-stick shooter. Okay, they checked that box. Except that the controls are downright awful. You have this ability to lock your mouse onto an enemy, but you end up forgetting it's locked on and then you lose the mouse. It's one of those games where sometimes you press a button expecting to knock out an enemy, just like you've done a dozen times before. Except this time it doesn't, for no apparent reason. You can move the camera around a little bit to see things, but it too is oddly clunky. In fact, clunky is pretty much the primary word that I can use to describe this game. I don't know if clunky was an intentional design choice or just the byproduct of whatever, but clunky it is. Did I mention it's clunky? If you ever tried to beat that record time around the Nürburgring with a PlayStation controller in Gran Turismo, you know the type of controller-smashing frustration this game inspires. If it wasn't for the fun of splattering some dude's brains all over the ground, I would have given up on this game a lot sooner than I did. In fact, I can't explain why I put as much time into the third mission as I did. In fact, if you've been watching this video, you've probably noticed that most of it is me dying, and dying, and dying, and dying, and dying, and dying, and dying in that same mission. And just to be extra annoying, while all the bad guys spawn in the same place, and move in the same loops, and spawn with the same weapons, the weapons that spawn when the level starts aren't always the same. So whatever plan you might have come up with to bust through the door and then throw the knife are slightly stymied by the fact that this time around, it's a bat. It's not entirely different, but it's different enough to be another layer of annoyance on top of being annoying. And clunky. Don't forget clunky. Before I give my final verdict, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share with your friends. Agree with me, disagree with me, or want to see other content? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to support me in making more of these videos, become a patron on Patreon. Your support really makes a difference. The Final Verdict This game frustrated me to death. On top of being a frustrating game, there's some kind of quote-unquote new mode that rode out, but my sim racing steering wheel was being detected as a game controller, and I fought that for a while, and then tried the old version, which crashed a bunch, and then finally figured it out, only to then suffer more with the clunky controls and all the other annoyances. On my trademark three-point score scale of avoid, meh, and I forgot to eat, I was almost too pissed off to eat, avoid. Unless you like torturing yourself and or souls-like games, in which case this might just be the gore fest you're looking for.